Slight delay, Dan. It'll be up in a second. That's fine. Time has come. Okay, I think we're live. Uh, hi guys. Uh, I'm Mills. I'm Sarah. Yep. Yes. We also have Fox Kid here, who's gonna help us out. Hey, how's it going? And we have uh Dan, the man Southworth live. You wanna say hi, I'm Dan? Well. Uh, Dan's just uh getting hello, his camera fixed. Sorry, Dan. Go on. I was just gonna say hello, everybody. I was just saying you've got some uh. Some Twitter problems going on, so it's just going to be a voice from there. Uh, I'm, doing my, I'm just dealing with my login. Yeah. Uh, moment. So uh, we can at least get this started on time, and you guys can. Okay, good. Cool. Give me, and then I'll see if I can get this up all over. Yep, no problem. Okay, so one of you guys want to start with the questions? I'm going to be playing in the background, so. Okay. Um, Fox, I think you wanted to start. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> So, uh, Dan, I had a question that uh, was actually asked on the subreddit, but it was actually something I was curious about, too. Uh, a few years ago, I don't know if you remember this, uh, at well, Ranger Stop uh, 2015, uh, the Power Ranger convention, uh, you had a DMC panel with uh, Ruben and Johnny. Point, uh, you kind of let slip that uh, there might be a Devil May Cry 5 in the works. Uh, uh, quite a few really years a before it was announced, because uh, Ruben, it really I wasn't think, a slip. it was a rumor that we had heard, and yeah. uh, they, they're, they're always, we, we always sort of hear in advance when people are thinking about doing projects. Um, so I didn't want to um, jinx it, so to speak, by speaking about something that may or may not have uh, finished its initial development phases or initial sort of pitch phases, right? A lot of times projects will get pitched and people will get excited about stuff and then they go away very quickly. So uh, that's what I was referring to when I said, should I even, can I even? He's like, no, don't, don't. Do <laughs> yeah. I, 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 just, I just mentioned that because uh, it was funny because I think that was uh, what kept a lot of uh, the fandom's hype going. Hope's uh, alive. <laughs> Hope's alive <laughs> because you kind of like let it slip, and then you said, and then you immediately went, and then Ruben immediately just flat out was like, "No, we're not allowed to say that." <laughs> yeah, uh, sometimes sometimes funny. they don't want people to know that they're they're thinking about they're even thinking about, yeah. and as it turned out, they wanted to keep my my character secret, so um, so that's what ended up happening. But uh, at that moment, at that moment, there was nothing in production. There was nothing for sure. It, it was just, it was just something that we had heard may or may not be an idea. So, okay. Uh, well, that falls into like a, a tangential question. Of that is, how soon after uh, that happened? That was like end of 2015, <laughs> if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. How soon after that did you get confirmation that you were uh, being cast and you were coming back as Virgil? When was that again? That, that uh, how, how soon after that uh, that when event? Was, did when, you get when, cast? Was, when was it, folks? The, uh, uh, the end of thing. 2015. End of 2015. It was the end of 2015. That convention. Well, that's crazy because then that was pretty soon afterwards. We we went to Japan and shot it in 2015, towards the end. So what what month was that? Because we were only uh, there. I believe it was November when I was looking at it last night, just to double check my information, because I didn't want to get anything wrong. But I'm pretty sure it was. Let me double check. But I'm pretty sure it was November 2015. Okay. It wasn't. It wasn't too long after that that things sort of uh, came together pretty quickly. So and it was, it, and it was a reality. Ooh. Wow. That's crazy. So, um, it's I guess crazy because okay. you never know. You never, yeah. um, I, I guess it's like a follow up question is like, what is that process like? You know, when, when you are in the beginning phases of, of being told, like, hey, you're coming back. And I know you did like the mocap stuff as well. Um, where do you even start? Do you do your lines first? Do you do the mocap first? Um, what is that production <laughs> kind of like? They, they didn't even have a, a script yet. Wow. I mean, that's how things came together. Wow. We had to sort of 
a lot for a lot of what you see we we collaborate with them on the on the English translation and there are some things that um, that they just for whatever reason want to hold on to mm -hmm. even though we'll say to them through the translation it's a little funny in our culture um, but they'll like it and they'll want to hold on to it so we don't win all of those those uh, those collaborations we don't we don't follow through and, and get all of our first choice picks uh during those collaborations but we get most of them they trust us they trust that we know our characters especially at this point right and allowed us i did a lot of i actually rewrote a lot of the lines for griffin oh really while, while i was mocapping that stuff and i'm sure uh some of the got rewritten even more when they uh, hired the voice actor to to come in and lay down his uh track over my performances so part of that is that you know most of the performance is finished in the motion capture filming stages because everything has to be about 90 to 95 percent the way the the cinematics are going to unfold because we have to play off of each other and understand what we're doing and that's where the the, the large portion of the life of the character is built from the performer's standpoint so right. there's an additional amount that goes into the character uh, into the final sort of character development that the animators do. And then a little bit of it gets tweaked when we have to come back and do the, uh, the voice, the voiceover stuff. So, um, where was I going with this? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, so, there, so there's a lot. Yeah. I, I think I was saying that, so the script wasn't, 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 um, complete yet. Uh, so they had to, they, they finished the script and then we have, we have to go through this whole process where we look through it. And then while we're performing, we'll make tweaks and changes to the dialogue while we're performing as well. Uh, so we don't know our lines. Uh, it's okay. not, it's not something we start with right away. Um, there have, you know, oftentimes there'll be back and forth. They'll send us pictures of what the characters look like, what the world looks like so we can sort of understand uh, and start to, in our own imagination, build the world that we're going to have to pretend to be in while mm -hmm. we're on set. Um, which is what's different about motion capture than actual than an actual film shoot. Uh, and that is that almost none of the world is, is built for you uh, in a realistic, complete way. You're always right. working with things that are representing a prop or another thing representing the um, the environment you're going to be in. Whereas on set, at least, you know, nowadays because of CGI and motion capture being infused into filmmaking, especially on fantasy films and action films, there's um, a percentage of the set that is sort of uh, just green screen or you have to really use your imagination to fill in. But still, there are prop pieces and costumes and wardrobes and, and wardrobe, I mean, and um, and set pieces and, uh, and and portions of the set, large portions of the set that are there to help you uh, be in the moment and be in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So you have, you have something to bounce off of, basically. You have yeah. something to kind of react to, whereas sitting in a booth or in a recording studio, you kind of have to like put yourself in it, which takes a little bit more work. Is That's that right. what you're saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it. I don't know if it takes more work. I don't know if it takes more work. It definitely. <clears throat> it's something different you have to get, uh, dynamic. I guess it'd be it, maybe a better word. Yeah, I, there. Yeah, I would say it's. A, it, it feels like it might be. It's a slightly different dynamic. It, I mean, they're. It's very similar. When you're an actor on set, you still have to. Um, you still have to sort of blur out the crew that's standing around you while you're in the scene. Um, so that you can try to get to a place where you're behaving as though you're really in this place. Um, and you sort of have to extend th that imagination when you're on a motion capture set because you're in a room where everything is marked with mathematically laid out tape lines and marks and there's 150 to 200 cameras all surrounding you. And, right. and tech wire running out of everything, so. <laughs> right. Um, can I ask a question? If you're, if this is even like a thing. So you said that you um, 
there are certain lines you tried to change, and they were really they were really like adamant that they stayed uh, that way. Can you, you uh, can you can you tell us any of those? Um, sometimes they come out to be fan favorites, like um, Jackpot. I was oh really? A, I was not a fan of Jackpot. Oh my gosh! Wow. But I didn't, I didn't I didn't really fight hard to change right. that. But I remember one day, uh, and I think it was. I think it was Devil May Cry 3 that Ruben was trying to come up with a line where he says to the two female characters something to the effect of, come on, let's go get them, or something like that. And they kept playing with this line, let's rock, babies. And I'm <laughs> like, no, man, no, that's, that's dumb. And they kept going, rock it, babies. No. Come on, baby, let's rock. And he just kept oh playing God. different ways to say it, and I'm like, I, we need to lose babies. <laughs> <laughs> It's not working. Oh, yeah. So someone else uh, can, uh, ultimately, I don't know what they chose. Um, I, I did not see that cinematic, and I don't know what what happened of it. But I think "Let's Rock Babies" is what came out. Of it. I think let's they say just "Let's Rock Baby." If it's the end of, if it's like the yeah. end of DMC four, I think they just say "Baby." <laughs> Want a job? <laughs> That's great. That would have been it right there. Let's rock, baby. <laughs> <laughs> just one, just one baby. No, no multiples. Um. Yeah, not plural. Yeah. <laughs> So someone asked if you can ask questions from the Reddit, the um the Reddit questions. Yeah, yeah. I I, uh, I got one actually uh, lined up uh, that kind of works for that. Cool. Uh, Dan, what's uh, this is a two parter. So, what's your favorite part of playing Virgil as a character, and are there any things you know about him that we or the script doesn't? As in, you know, things you fill in uh, the blanks with to better fit in the role. Give me just a second. I'm typing in this password right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. no problem. <clears throat> oh, they couldn't verify my credential. <laughs> oh, That's no. Ridiculous. Okay. All right, let me try another thing. Um, so what was the question again? I'm sorry. No, it's all good. What's the um, thing I liked about Virgil, you said, right? Playing Virgil. Part of playing him, and then uh, anything you know about him that we or the script doesn't, so anything that you kind of project onto him yourself. Um, I mean, the thing that I love about Virgil is that he's uh, a samurai character. I mean, the, the, that for me was... <clears throat> I just, that's the... That's kind of the thing that I really dig about the character is that he's he's um, even in this world um, he has a bit of a traditional samurai uh, presence about him, and um, you know that to me is really cool because I I grew up watching Akira Kurosawa films and I was a big fan you know and, um, I love I love getting to play those kinds of characters I got a chance to play Kenshi. On Mortal Kombat Legacy mm. Season 2. Oh, that's awesome. uh, I, I was looking at your uh, IMDb. Uh, I was also reminded that you also played uh, the Quantum Ranger, which is yeah. it kind of feels similar to that. I, I was thinking right. I was like, you play right. a lot of those honorable characters. Right before right before um, I landed the role of uh, Virgil, I, I had just come out. on the, That was on the heels of playing uh, the Quantum Ranger and Power Rangers Time the Force. Um, so anyway... That, that's an aspect of the character that I really enjoy getting to play. I'm told, you know, and I spent a lot of years, um, actually, when I did Devil May Cry, I had just come off of uh, do, being an actor on the show Power Rangers. And right before that, I was doing a lot of the live show appearances and even did some stunts for the show. And I got a chance to work with a few of the Japanese stuntmen on that show. And they spent time working with me on my sword performance. Um, and I say sword performance because it's not anything like wielding a real samurai, uh, I'm sorry, a real katana, right. which can be very dangerous if you start twirling it around and flipping it through the air like that, because it'll off your ear and you won't even know it. <laughs> um, and uh, so I, I sort of had a little bit of um, a sense of pride about the fact that I had how to do some of this stuff and by the time I got onto the set of Devil May Cry uh, 3 uh, what I was hearing back from the producers was yeah yeah he has this sort of um, 
this really Western, wild sense of sword swinging that he does that we think works for the character. And I'm sitting there going, wild? <laughs> right. Um, wow. And I realized that there's there's a tr there's a lot more refinement to uh, the sword performance that I would probably need to go and do if I wanted to portray a a proper samurai. But um, but uh, they 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 like the the wildness with which they say my character or my or me or they say I uh, wield the sword. So that's a little bit of a secret for you. Um, to them, they feel that uh, all of my sword work in fight choreography with the sword it has a little bit of a wild element to it. That's really cool. Um, okay. <laughs> so then... Okay, so this is one from the subreddit. It's uh, DN Towns is the user. It says, if, uh, if Dante's go-to food is pizza, what's Virgil's? Hmm... Definitely not pizza. <laughs> for, that's that's food stuff for little turtles that run around. With, you know, <laughs> uh, um, I don't think Virgil eats. He's <laughs> <laughs> just and a robot, it, just the sword fighting yeah. robot. I imagine he was pro he'd probably suck the blood of some beast. <laughs> <laughs> Is that I thought you were going to again. I thought you were going to go the opposite direction, and he was the samurai warrior that sustained himself off of, like, a single grain of rice. <laughs> For, like, seven years, yeah. That's <laughs> he pretty just cool. Eats, he just eats red orbs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I never really thought about what, what it was that Virgil ate. I think it crossed my mind once when I was watching uh, Ruben do some ridiculous piece with the pizza. Right. That he had on set. It, it was a cardboard s triangle slice that he had. He was holding in his hand. And I remember thinking, I wonder what Virgil eats. I remember just, it was a fleeting thought. And then I I was on to the next thing I had to work. No. Oh, man. Oh, well. So there you uh, go. He, he, sucks the blood, he sucks the blood of beasts. <laughs> that is the official answer. <laughs> that's that's yeah. canon that's now. And he drinks it like coffee in the morning. <laughs> awesome. Hardcore. Uh, Fox. Yeah, I, I got another one. Uh, this is a bit of a callback to your stuff in uh, 3. Uh, when you were reprising your role in uh, 5, uh, did you intentionally catch a cold, a cold for reprising this role? No. No, I never had a cold. No? <laughs> okay, yeah, I was going to ask if that was like, because that's like the old like rumor, you know, was that Dan Southworth had a cold when he was doing Virgil. But like, that's not true, right? No, it's not true at all. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't even know where don't that know where came they from. On, but... That's just like one of those old, you know, those rumors that gets passed around when people talk about the games. But okay, good to I know. know. I saw it. I saw it being passed around, and it's wrong. Okay. Okay. Um. Let me see. Who's Twitter? Dan is Twitter cooperating yet? No, it's giving me a. Aww. Foolishness. <laughs> See, Fox, do you have another question? I've got like a whole list. I'm trying to find a good one. Um, I I got another one. Uh, cause you did you uh did you and Ruben and Johnny since you uh I believe you're all located in America. Uh, did you do all your recording at like Capcom USA or did you record in your own uh spaces for your uh, voice work? You talking about when we did the? Uh, we did not work out of our own. No, we went to a a sound booth, and um, we recorded all of the uh, the additional. I I don't even know if they used how much they used from set. I think we recorded all of the lines uh, in a sound booth. Okay, and you guys were all uh, together. No, they scheduled this at different times. So a lot of times. Uh, they would play back the video of us working together on set, and you would have to recall what that moment was based on the video you were looking at. Uh, you had script references there for you, um, and then they would also play back if they had recorded Johnny or before me, they would play back their performance for me to work off of. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, well, Radio, do you have anything? 
Yeah, after that actually comes back to another voice acting question. Um, Cause you also did Yura Zen and you did Virgil. Um, so like, when, when you do that, when you, the question is what was your mindset and how was your approach different with scenes involving Virgil and Yura Zen? Like how do you approach those characters differently to kind of um, get those very different performances? Um, well, I, so you have, Virgil has, of course, uh, his overall goal, whatever that may be, and, and you decide what that is based on the story that you're working in at the moment. Um, and then he's conflicted uh, by his human element and his relationship to his brother. There's, there's all of that conflict that comes into uh, building the character. Whereas Urizen is the more extreme version of an aspect of Virgil's character. And that's what's going on in Devil May Cry 5. Uh, v, uh, Griffin, even, um, uh, Urizen, they're all, they're all aspects of uh, Virgil's character. I, th I thought it was interesting that they used the Roman name V for DMC5. I thought that was a pretty mm. cool thing. Oh, that, yeah. That really, the whole story is about Virgil. Um, and the whole time you're going through the game with V, you're actually there with Virgil, but don't realize it. Yeah. It's only in hindsight you realize these things. Yeah. Right. So, um, so that 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 would be that was how I approached separating the characters, um, and um, just being sort of more extreme. Uh, Urizen, for example, was more of a character that was fixated on only one goal and uh, everything else, all the con anything else was inconsequential. Right. Um, it didn't matter. And so uh, for me, he was a character that was more in kind of a Zen state. Yeah, uh, I guess that makes sense. Where he was after something, he was after something bigger than anything that existed on that, in that, in that world. It was, right. He was after something more universal. There's a question. More, cos more cosmic. There was, right. a, there was yeah. a question in the chat from a person called Ender Lollipop Guy. It says, uh, what lines did Dan do when auditioning for Dante? For Dante? I can't remember this. They were a long time. Um, I didn't even know you auditioned for Dante. Uh, for Devil May Cry 4. And I think it's the lines where Dante shows up into the church. Uh, and Nero, you know, fights Dante for the first time. They had us audition those lines. But they said that my voice was just too clearly Virgil's. It, it just wouldn't. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, oh, go ahead, Fox. Uh, yeah, so I got another oh. one from the uh, subreddit. Uh, this works. Sorry, guys. Hmm? Oh, sorry, did we have a breakthrough with the, with Twitter? Is that what happened? Yeah, my, I have long passwords and I have a labyrinth of, of find this password here, go here to get that password. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. I need, to, I need to simplify this. Okay, so anyway, go ahead. I may have figured this out. Awesome. Um, this this kind of connects to the previous question. Uh, were there any uh, voice lines that were hard to record in five that stuck out? Uh, no, I don't. I, I mean, um, my voice. They had to. They had to uh, put an effect on my voice for Eurozen. Um so I could only get as low as I can. My voice naturally goes for years. I, I wished I could have gotten it a little bit deeper, but I mean that, that you know, voice range or for that character probably was the the most difficult thing for me. Just trying to change it up enough. Um, the, the the thing that I'm fortunate about uh, is that um, the thing that's fortunate for me is that Virgil is just my voice. Um, I didn't try to to do anything in, with my range, um, which is limited. Um, so um, that's what stood out to me. I mean, other than that, there are weird things that will happen during the the voice recording where they're like, you have to say this line, but you only have 1.3 seconds to say it. 
Um, and by the way, don't just try to get it all out as soon as you can. It has to last the full 1.35 seconds. Oh. You know, because it's yeah. got to be timed with this picture that they're trying to line it up with. And so sometimes that can be a little bit difficult. But for the most part, um, it's pretty easy. It's my favorite part of the experience is you just roll up in your pajamas, have some coffee and... <laughs> You know, you have a little bit of water, and you you just spout out lines. My my wife calls it. Are you gonna go breathe like a dragon? Because she came into a session once, and I had to do all this action noise. <laughs> just <stop. laughs> um. Okay. Let's see. I have one picked out. Where'd it go? Was the oh yeah? Here it is. Um. So, like. How frustrating was it to to have to hold back that secret? You know, because it's like we all knew that like Johnny and Ruben were coming back, and there's this new guy playing V and and all that, um, and so everybody else is getting to you know like, hey, I'm in Devil May Cry Five, and then you know you literally had to wait until after the game was out really to be like, hey, I'm in Devil May Cry Five. Um, was that like was it? Were you just like bursting to tell people? Uh, it just sucked because I couldn't participate. I mean, yeah, they were going to parties and events. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not fair. And I was just like, you guys are jerks. <laughs> <laughs> and they just left me out. I'm sorry, Dan, we can't take you. We wanted to keep his be a secret. So I think I was talking to Ruben, and he was talking about going to a Devil May Cry party just before the release, like a week before. <sighs> What's this party you going to, man? And he goes, oh, it's going to be in Japan. And, uh, oh, so, not, I mean, not that, I mean, yeah, yeah. It That that, that bugged me a little bit. But, yeah. but it's always fun to watch. It was fun to watch um, everybody try to guess what's going on and watch. I mean, you know, everybody was, everybody else's participation was fun to observe. <clears throat> And, just and... I, I just keep getting called back hearing that. I just keep getting called back to the end ending line of uh, five where you're, uh, Virgil's questioning if their lives were different. <laughs> oh, yeah. If yeah. <laughs> their oh, lives yeah. were different, you would get to go to those parties and not Ruben. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? Um, but are you... Oh, shoot, I just lost my headphones. Sorry. Um, I guess you get to go to... Have there been any, like, post-launch parties that you've got to go to? No. Oh, man. What a shame. Sure. Okay. It's okay. Uh, um, we're we're going to all get together. We're going to go on. We're going to try to get together for a bunch of conventions to meet fans. And ooh. That'll be fun on its own. Can I ask you a small question? I don't know if it's officially been announced with the con yet, but are you going to MomoCon? Uh, I don't know about it, uh, but if somebody wants to send me some information on it, I'll agent and trying to make it happen cool okay cool cool because cool. ruben and because uh, i think ruben and johnny are going to be at that one so awesome uh fox you're up uh so this is from uh the subreddit uh who's best at playing the dmc games between you johnny and ruben oh, and uh do you have a favorite on, on weapon? Too. i don't play the games you guys oh it's okay <laughs> <Sorry>. it's okay <laughs> I used to play all kinds of video games for a while, and then I was spending 40 hours a week doing that, and because I, I get pretty intense when I play one of those things, so I don't play them anymore. Fair enough. Do you know if like, I do you know if Ruben, do you know what Johnny do? Uh, but but I don't. What were you gonna say? What were you saying? Oh, sorry. Um, do you know if Ruben and Johnny do? Uh, I think Ruben plays a little bit. I'm not, I can't answer for Johnny. I'm not sure okay. Johnny does a whole lot. Okay. Um, so I have a question from KJ. He's another mod who was going to be here, but uh, he couldn't make it. Um, and he asked, after uh, Virgil or Nero was a son in five, did you approach the performance differently? Like, did you, I guess when you found out that that was the story, um, did you approach that character and any of those line readings any differently? Um, 
for Devil May Cry 5? Mm-hmm. I can't, I... I, well, yes. I mean, I think so, because, you know, 15 late, years later, I'm, I'm different in the way I approach my work. Right. Mature as an actor, <laughs> and, and my craft has evolved. So, for those reasons, yes. Right. <clears throat> okay. Fox, you're up. Uh, okay, so uh, we got one from uh, was it uh, Jesta that was asking these questions, Mel's in our, in uh, our yeah, chat? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. How was it getting back, uh, getting to work uh, with Ruben and Johnny again? Oh, it was fun. Those guys were a lot of fun to work. With. You've also uh, done uh, work with Johnny um, in I can't remember what movie it was, but you got to do some uh, action scenes with uh, Johnny. Yeah, that was uh, with. Koichi Sakamoto direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that was yeah. even before <laughs> four. I think, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was, yeah. And that was a nice experiment because, um, it was. It's an eighty. It's a. It's a ninety minute long film or eighty five minute long film. Seventy minutes of action. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The, and so it's just action, action, action. Um, and, uh, I, I feel like it, it, it's too much. It, it, that, that, what was interesting about that was that it just ends up being too much action. Uh, you just, you, you, <laughs> it all blends together after a while. Yeah. You kind of get bogged <laughs> down by it. The action in it is, is really good. Right. It is, but it's a lot of it. <laughs> we also got, uh, we also got, uh, Virgil and Nero, uh, before five in that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, you do. I think. Uh, radio. That... Oh. Ooh. Go ahead. I I I think that's when. Yeah, that was before five. That was. Was that before four? I think that was before. I think it yeah. was because I think it was two thousand seven, maybe early two thousand eight. I think. Yeah, that's when we when we first started talking to Johnny about potentially doing. I can't remember. I mean, I think they. I don't know. Sometimes we'll talk about a lot of stuff, and then it'll happen years later, and, and you don't know why, or it was just uh, by chance that they happened to like his audition when he came in, and we also ended up working on these films together. So I can't say that it was a result of that, or that, because Ruben wasn't on that show, so. You, you guys are usually in pretty good uh, communication with each other, like you uh, are, I don't want to say like, you know, best friends, but you guys uh, chat fairly frequently? Frequently enough, I mean, I see Johnny occasionally at uh, comic conventions. I see Ruben a little bit, a lot less than I used to. Um, but we'll we'll end up running into each other at a few of these conventions that we're going to show up to uh, for Double May Cry fans. Um, but I haven't seen. I used to see Ruben a lot more. I used to work. He used to be in Los Angeles, and we work uh, in the same circles together. So I saw Ruben more than I saw Johnny. Um, but I mean, I've done another film with Johnny called uh, Hellbinders, where I played the one of the main villains, and um, uh, that was because uh, we were working in the same circles out here. Uh, but not as often as it used to be ten years ago. Okay. okay. Hmm. Um. So in the game, like. The, the new kind of aspect of Virgil's character is this, like, lover of, like, William Blake poetry, which is really interesting to me. Um, do you think, would you be willing to read, like, a line from Blake if I posted it in our chat? Sure. Like, in the void? Awesome. Thank you. Because a lot of people were asking for that, because there's no line in the game where Virgil actually says anything from Blake. I know. Um, it's too bad. I would have loved to have had a chance to do that. Awesome. Yeah, I just posted one in the Discord chat if you wanted to read that one. Uh, give me a second here. I'm reading oh, yeah. this, this, this message I'm getting from Twitter. About my <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's still it's still giving you problems. I really am sorry. Quest token for this page is invalid. It may have been used or expired because it is too old. Please go back to the site application. Twitter hates fun, apparently. 
and it was probably just oh my god. Oh well. Oh well. I guess we can just I knew you know, I I knew oh wait a minute. Looks like I'm logged in to Twitter here. Uh oh. Uh oh. oh. All right, so it worked. So let me go back to. I'm gonna pause the game here. E okay, so let me go back to your the request token for this. Um, okay, so go ahead. Did you post it up? Yeah, I did. It's in the chat. Okay, let me. Here we go. Ready. <clears throat> Um, okay, let me give it a shot. Okay. I'm, I'm t so right now I'm just taking it in and just sort of figuring out what the it's okay. mean to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Ready? Ready. Okay. This, you want me to say this? As Virgil? Yes. To see the world. Oh, sorry. Start again. <clears throat> to see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in the hour. Mm, so awesome. <laughs> Thank you. That's so You're awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was really, um, it was like, of all the things we find out about Virgil, which is a ton of stuff in five, which I was really not expecting at all. Um, the poetry thing really caught me off guard. Did, I yeah. mean, I guess, was that the same thing with for you? Um, they, they, uh, no, it wasn't. The same. It was. It didn't catch me off guard. I just thought it was really no yeah. going on there. Was that they were sort of just exploring a deeper aspect of um, Virgil, which makes sense. That's yeah. to me absolutely makes sense. That that's the sort of uh, sensibility he has. Where Dante will just spout off a, a quick quip and be you know really an anecdote and be funny. Virgil will actually have something. Um, to say that is sort of grounded in uh, historical literature. Or <laughs> I'm, not to, I'm trying not to say Dante's an idiot and Virgil. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You're allowed to say that because I think. But if you but to compare the two, Virgil would Virgil is a sophisticated character and Dante is just a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Awesome. You're totally allowed to say that because you know. Okay, like I, I think said I Virgil prefer... totally would. <laughs> oh yeah, I see, your, I see your request, Dan. Here we go. Oh my gosh! Is this it? Did we finally get it working? Browser device does not support video calls. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh. Desktop or laptop with the reason. Okay, guys. Well, that sucks. Well, we tried. The suckle is all you're going to get from Dan, I'm afraid. Sorry, guys. Oh, man. <laughs> we tried. Oh, my God. Okay, so, all right. I'm now completely 100% focused on what you guys are doing, or asking me, and to engage you much more. <laughs> to engage you. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, hey, Fox, no. you're up. I had just taken the time to sort of arrange the living room. <laughs> shop. Oh, no. oh, God, I, feel, you know, I feel really bad now, actually. Get no. the shutters angle so I could bounce the light properly. <laughs> you know, I have you get, get your bounce sheets. I've got my whole, got my whole sort of uh, James Lipton set up here. Going <laughs> on inside the actor studio. And you're oh, not. I feel terrible now, Rip. <laughs> Your big uh, life-size uh, portrait of uh, Dan in the background. <laughs> uh, actually, it's a life-size portrait of Langdon. <laughs> oh, okay. well, there you go. Were you joking, or did you know that that, that was in, on my wall? The most beautiful, bro <laughs> the most beautiful bromance. <laughs> it, so what happened was, I did a television show uh, kicking it for mm -hmm. about four years, and Ruben was originally the portrait I have hanging on my. wall text it and I mean I'll take a picture of it um 
And uh, Ruben was originally this. And what they did was um, they took a bunch of pictures of him because they used his likeness. Uh, the, the, one of the characters that owns the karate school in the television show is Bobby Wasabi. Bobby mm-hmm. Wasabi is, you know, a little bit older and fatter now and balding. But, um, and that's played by a comedian that was also a writer on the show. But um, in his younger days, when he, he was an action star like Chuck Norris. And so they used Ruben as the young version of him. And they took all of these amazing pictures and they did posters and paintings, Warhol ripoffs. And uh, uh, when the show ended, uh, Ruben, so Ruben worked on it for about a season or two. And then we took over and did all the action because Ruben wanted to go on to some other um, and so by the end of the season, they were getting rid of all this artwork, and it was a ton of awesome artwork of Ruben and his face, right? <laughs> so I came across this piece, and I was like, that piece. So I got it framed. Oh, my God. And uh, I can, I'll post the picture. Where should I post it so you guys could? Uh, see the chat where Radio posted that uh, William Blake thing? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's post there. It. So and we can, we, I guess we can maybe put it on Twitter or something after the after the stream is over. So, right, just so everybody can share yeah. that. I can put it on stream if you want. I can have it like. Oh, on can stream. you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, you totally should. Uh, let me turn on my <laughs> technical issues here. <laughs> let me turn. It's okay. Uh, We've just been. It's been all technical issues. So. Yeah. Let me turn on my Bluetooth. Song. Okay, there. We go. So now I can set it. That in. Um. So anyway. That's what I have hanging on my wall. And I love it. I think it's awesome. You guys will appreciate it once you're able to see it here. I'm so and, excited. Because yeah, when you wait. said you had a picture when you said you had a picture of Ruben Langdon on your wall, I was like, Oh, he's be he's joking. Yeah, I thought you were No, <laughs> yeah. you actually have a picture of Ruben Langdon on your wall. I actually have a picture and now I'm gonna sit and let the anticipation. Uh yes, and there it is. Uh. Oh, here we go. Oh my god. Oh, god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, that's great. That's amazing. It's huge. It covers it covers a large portion of This is incredible. Isn't it incredible what they did <laughs> for this for this television show because this guy was supposed to be a serious a, a former, you know, karate <laughs> movie actor. They did all kinds of pictures like this. So there would be episodes where you go to his home, and his home is just adorned from wall to wall, just stocked wall to wall with pictures of his former and posters of his former days as a karate guy. So this was supposed to be a poster that they had made, uh, and then I I took it and got it framed. So that is just incredible. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, that is amazing. Someday, someday we'll give it, I'll give it to Ruben, oh. but I can't part with it yet because I just love it. I <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Uh, stylistically, I actually dig the colors, and I would probably hang that up, even like yeah. if it wasn't Ruben Langdon. Like that actually is some like, nice uh, pop <laughs> art. Cool, that's so cool. Oh, man. I love it. it. Just works with you know the the background of us working. Man, now I really wish we could have gotten the 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 webcam thing working because it could just be like <laughs> you just like chilling. It's like is that Ruben Langdon in hey, the background? Hey, Dan, so I had- that where I would be talking with you guys and that would be taking up half of the <laughs> oh, man. Do you want me to like, so, put that in, in So it would be me talking and just Ruben in his ridiculous pose in the macro. Do you want me to I put that in your love, place? By the way, I love the way Ruben plays Dante because just nobody can do Dante like Nope. Is, oh no. Oh my god, nobody. Ruben is a very he's a unique he's a unique personality. I'm gonna have and that. Well, why, I guess, I guess you heard about them. the. I guess you heard about the thing in Guatemala too. Is that like the wildest story you've ever heard? It doesn't surprise me that. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> but I, I saw him recently, uh, and I'm glad he's okay. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't surprise me that. No. I've got the uh, I've got the image in your place now, Dan. Where your webcam was gonna go on stream, I have the uh, the image there now. So. This is awesome. <laughs> cool. 
Cool, yeah. cool. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a... Um, take this. Uh-oh. Maybe we can use that. <laughs> okay, good. So this is... This is... Approximately. I had some. Okay, so I'll send this to you guys. Okay. And then you, you can put this up, and then people can pretend. Yeah. <laughs> we just pretend you're talking. We can animate a little moving like mouth on you. So, yeah. <laughs> little cartoon mouth yeah. like himself. Make his head bubble up and down like the Canadians in South Park. Right. There you go. There's the image. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Perfect. Beautiful. Taking out the Albert Einstein in the background. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, I'm just going to change that then real quick. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Second best, you know. It works. Perfect. <clears throat> so, uh, then I guess the next question from the subreddit. So, Dan, when's DMC6, buddy? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I'd, like get, I'd like to get right to work on it. Gosh, I would love to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't oh, know it's what, so amazing they're bringing to... us all back together and <laughs> Capcom has plans. I mean, I'm I'm hoping that this is extreme because uh, it you know it will keep it uh, among their favorite flagship um, projects to uh, live. Mm -hmm. I you know I yeah our voices haven't changed so there's no reason do this. the characters right. have completely aged um, but it, it's up to them it's up to their sort of creative sensibilities their you know perspective and they want to go with the project from there i think it could go on for another four, five or even 15 renditions personally <laughs> these are Maybe. immortal talking about you wouldn't you wouldn't get any complaints out of me i don't think anybody listening to this stream would mind <laughs> Why not? Why not keep right? it going? Yeah, I, 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 you know, it just it depends on what's going. On. Okay. I remember. Uh, uh, I think it was Devil May Cry. Was there for that? Um, they uh, they brought us up to the um, headquarters where a lot of their animators are working on the uh, the different clips that we create for them, and. Uh, I remember it was a long ride up in an elevator, and I turned to, uh, I think Itsunano, Itsuno was, uh, was in the uh, elevator with me, and the team from Just Cause uh, at the time, and I remember turning to them and saying, so, actually going into the real problem. <laughs> and they, it took them a while to to get the joke but that's where of course resident evil was created in that building wow <clears throat> all right fox you're up fox can you read the question uh, i put in the uh yeah yeah, yeah. I, I give you the thumbs up yeah uh i do want to mention uh because we're not going to you know read them read them all out uh there's a ton of uh comments that are just saying how much they love your work and how much ha how happy they are you're back i assume yeah. you already know that but Yes, <laughs> um, I'm happy, and I think that they should do a double make cry six at the time. Yeah, I think that uh, too. Just, I agree. Just all Virgil, just all it Virgil. Should be, game. It, should be, it should just be Virgil. <laughs> just a Virgil game. Oh my god! Don't even get me started. That would be the coolest thing. We'll give we'll uh, give Dante and Nero a cameo. Yeah. Okay. So. Look. Sorry, yeah. radio. Uh, there. No. Uh, okay, on. Mills. What I was going to say is, before I forget, someone, Lisa. Lizard from Twitter, she yeah. sent in a uh, DMC5 code to give away, so I was going to go ahead and do that now. Oh! Um, okay. Because that was a lovely gesture, so if you guys want to win DMC5, I'm assuming you've already played the game, but you can win it on Steam, post exclamation mark raffle in the chat, and you could win DMC5, so yep, go ahead. Nice. Thanks, Lizard. Thanks, Lizard. Uh, she and is from, incredibly talented. Oh my god, everybody should be. 
And from Lizard, uh, Dan, uh, the question she has is, uh, how would you compare Virgil's way of conveying emotions to uh, Dante or Nero? And how would you translate these emotions into mocapping and voice acting? Uh, well, I mean, of course, Nero is raw, exposed nerve percent of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Dante has his way of coping with his way of coping with everything is to is to shoot out a quip or an anecdote or uh, just sort of be funny about it. Um, Virgil's an intense character. It internalizes. That's what that's the aspect of that character that makes him very much like a samurai. Um, and very Japanese uh, traditionally speaking. Uh, in the way that he internalizes everything. And and playing that is difficult in motion capture because less so nowadays because motion cap the technology is getting so good that you can convey a lot with your facial expression and the technology can pick it up it can pick up more subtle um nuances in your facial expression when we first started it wasn't, it wasn't quite that um that evolved the technology so a lot of motion capture was about conveying those emotions physically with your body. And um, that's a difficult thing to do when you're playing a character that has a subtle way of um, uh, expressing and reacting to his environment. Um, so one of the ways that I still use when I'm motion capturing uh, the character is his posture. Um, and the very careful way that he moves so that when he does move fast uh it's it's uh it's juxtaposed with how calm and deliberate his movement is otherwise um and that that, that can help create a sense of emotion urgency in the character um his posture is very still so when he does move you're very tuned in to every gesture that comes out of that movement because you know he's not going to do very much and so you become you become much more glued to the character uh because you're looking for any sense of what he's going to reveal because he doesn't reveal that much and that became the way that i needed to play that character so that because he doesn't move very much when he does move it speaks volumes and it's very um very noticeable, very big, and it's very expressive in comparison to how big the characters uh, Dante and Nero. Right. Nice. Uh, I was going to say it's it's almost like uh, the complete opposite, at least from my understanding of watching uh, from when I was a kid and even watching like nowadays when I look at clips. It's the opposite of how you have to do uh, Power Ranger stuff, where you almost have to be very exaggerated um in costume or on the show uh, in costume but it, but in the show you also kind of have to I mean, there seems to be a lot more articulation physically yeah i uh because especially because you're you're, you're in spandex and a, a plastic bucket or a helmet <laughs> <laughs> um and so you have to and you have to be and of course because it's a the audience is a is a younger age. You have to engage them with with action, you know that ha that has to catch their attention. Um, but all of that suit acting is where um, I developed the skill that then transferred into motion capture, because I had to learn to convey emotions without speaking and physically. And so, and and part of that was because. Um, uh, for since 2000, since 1995 to 2000, I think four and five. That's when I was first cast. Um, I worked uh, for corporate headquarters for Saban Entertainment, which then was uh, traveling around the world doing appearances, costume, various colors of rangers. And we would see 2,500 kids on weekend sign on. Mm -hmm pictures and kids were very afraid of you sometimes and so really? you, had to, you had to learn how I had to learn how to express a 
range of emotions to get a five-year-old uh, little boy or girl to trust that I was it was going to be safe to approach me, <laughs> to trust that it would be okay to hold my hand or take a picture with me. Oh my and, gosh! And and then to actually make that a a valuable experience for them. Um, and on you know and and it, and it, I had to deal with teenagers who were being cool, but they were there. Oh so, and. And they have a whole other set of different ways you have to deal with them and approach them so that, and you kind of have to teach them that they can't smack you in the head and do funny things to you because that's what teenagers do. Yeah. Right. And then parents act a completely different way. And then parents with their kids, you know, sometimes um, parents will be really, uh, some of these parents will be upset that they're waiting in line for a kid to even want a picture. And so, kind of inserting yourself into that dynamic so that you can calm the parent down because sometimes, you know, I mean, you don't know, you don't have to go to school to be a parent. So for some of them, they're not as intuitive at it <laughs> and they don't, that you can't, you can't make it worse by getting angry at the child. Mm -hmm. There's a whole, for 10 years I did that on him and, and I learned quite a bit about how to, have an experience with somebody without saying anything. They couldn't see my face. Right. And that that really was a valuable skill set uh, when motion capture started being prevalent as a medium to work in. Yeah. And yeah, especially but... you see those nuances, with, uh, like I said earlier, how contained Virgil is. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, the motion capture performance five are. I mean, they're really good. I mean, not just fans are saying that. Like, I was reading. I don't know if it was Kotaku or somewhere else like that, but um, a lot of people are saying just that the performances in five are really good. And that doesn't include yours. I mean, I think you're I pretty good in five. I think there are two reasons. I think first of all, I think Johnny, we we just had a lot of years to. To work on projects and so we just mature as actors right. but also the te again the technology is better the nuances that they can capture in the facial expressions are better. just amazing yeah so, oh my gosh. so what's interesting now is mocap is is progressing from a place where it was very much doing big indicative actions and acting like real acting, you don't have to. You don't have to. In fact, uh, there's a there's a few projects I've worked on where the director is high, and the, the, the productions are hiring straight up actors that don't have any mocap experience because they don't need to. They just need to come in with their tools and, and be real. Um, and some of the direction I'll hear is tone it down, make it more nuanced, bring it bring it bring it from a real place and that's because you know the technology is capturing the data like a camera mm -hmm. than it is uh an animated uh condition like yeah. um you mentioned kids and that actually kind of had a question that was asked in the thread and um just something i always kind of wondered i know you worked on four um you did the motion capture for credo um so did yeah. you know, like, when did they tell you that, that Nero was Virgil's kid? Um, I think pretty early on. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Like back when you were doing four, like. Right. Yes. Back when I was doing. Wow. Cause they didn't, um, reveal that for years and years. So it's, it's. They didn't. I, I let it slip out. On accident. <laughs> oh, really? Wait, when? Um, I don't even know if it got caught on camera, but um, we did an appearance somewhere, and all I said was, "And here's my son, Nero." Oh, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's Nero, awesome. Later, Capcom came to me and said, "Why did you say that?" And I go, thinking about it. <laughs> that was that was sort of when I was learning to go. Oh, okay, I have to be very careful. 
cap cops. How 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 engaged with the audience we can be uh, material, and it's very difficult. For anybody who does anything, any of these projects, you want to engage the fans, and the audience when you do these things because you want to participate in the excitement of it. Um, but the problem with that is that you can accidentally end up giving away tidbits or bits of information that they prefer not do. So, you know, I have to be very guarded when it is not released yet. And I go to, and I learned to do that from that's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. And the other one that was almost up when I talked about uh, DMC5 at that uh, convention in 2015. Oh, <clears throat> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, now, the, funny thing, the thing that's funny oh. to me is that uh, I'll put Instagram posts up and, they, on, on, and Twitter posts up, and, and I'm very careful about not revealing anything, but to watch people make their own speculations. There's one of that's a video of me just working out. I'm just working out. And the speculation is because the bar is on the fifth rung and <laughs> <laughs> they had an LA fitness got an LA fitness where they have posters on the wall all over those gyms that say motivate, work hard, you know, yeah. intensity. The 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 word in the background happened to be motivate. Oh my god. Yeah. So this whole <laughs> That I had very discreetly was telling everybody, yes, Devil May Cry at Five is coming out. I don't know, and I'm just going, wow, that's crazy. And I'll get calls from Capcom sometimes, sometimes because fans will put stuff up, and I'll say to them, that's not, I don't own that site. That's not my site, fan site, and that's mm. their own question. Um, and sometimes I'll know a few of the fan sites and I'll discreetly contact and then go, Capcom would like you to just sort of participate in the secrecy of this and take that down and then they'll take it down and they'll... but most of the time it's better to, I, it's better to just leave those things alone and let the fans speculate and draw their own conclusions because it just adds to the excitement of the, of the, the game um, but they have called me a couple of times and I've, I've had to tell them nope that's not me I'm not doing that <laughs> uh, yeah because I think uh, Johnny got that a little bit too I don't know if it was intentional or not but uh Back when the big leak happened uh, before E3, when it was officially announced, I think it was in December. Uh, I, I've been I've been going through like the the back catalog of it for research purposes, and uh, <laughs> when it was uh, when the big leak happened, like a day or two later, uh, Johnny posted a picture of something. I think it was also a gym, and there was a clock that said. Uh, 505 or something, and oh, everyone's like, yeah. Oh, Sons of Sparta! Like, oh, da, da. and then it's like <laughs> that, but also, like, I think you're kind of making connections where they might not be. Yeah, that's fun, it's fun to watch. I, I don't think it's anything wrong with it. I, I love it. I, it's cool, you know, see that something that you're doing out there anticipated people obsessing about, it. right? It's fun, it's fun. <clears throat> Have you seen how many fans want a, a Virgil DLC? Have you seen the... the Say uh, that again. Have you seen how many fans, like, of DMC5 want to see a DMC, like a Virgil DLC? Like a Virgil story chapter that's separate from the main game? Have you seen, like, how many people have been talking about that? Because there is so many people who want... Yeah, the whole, the whole chat's asking us to be like, yeah. hey, ask him about, ask him about Virgil DLC. Virgil yeah. deal? Oh, DLC. oh, you mean the DLC, yeah. Downloadable download content, characters. yeah. Uh, I don't know what Capcom's going to do with that, uh, but, I mean, it's a whole game centered around the Virgil characters, so it, it, right. you know, it makes sense to me that got something planned. I, I just don't know anything about it. Um, you know, they, they, they're probably just... Either if they're, if they're not working on it to make sure it's really kick-ass, because that's what they do, they do... They're amazing over there, the team that makes these games. They really card and they obsess over just the right choices. And that's why the game is so it's so received by, by people. So if it's if it's not out yet, it's because they're taking their time to make yeah. sure it's done well. And that that's that's the one thing I really do appreciate about working 
the Japanese company. Just the Japanese culture is that it doesn't matter what position they're in or what they're doing. The culture has a really strong sense of integrity yeah. in everything that they do. Everything that they do. That's what they're doing. They're doing. And I, I have learned quite a bit that is an example. I think that's an important thing to carry on as a personality trait. So it's why we love their games so much and their technology so much, you know. Uh -huh. 100%. This Absolutely. product that they're making. Yeah. <clears throat> so I would say it's probably coming and it's probably going to be really kick ass. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Have you, um, I guess you, you mentioned being in an elevator with, with uh, Itsuno-san. Um, do you, like how often do you see uh, Itsuno and, and the other producer, director types uh, when you work on that kind of thing? He's a really personable guy. He'll have dinner with us. We'll, halfway through the filming, we'll, we'll have sort of a mid-celebration. Uh, he'll, you know, he'll come out with us and hang out with us arrive and we, when we rap you know we'll, sometimes we'll do karaoke we'll have a really nice big meal and then you know the, we'll do karaoke and it's a lot of fun. and he's very accessible very personable when he comes to los angeles sometimes we eat him for dinner um and um and he's he's always very upfront he's very upfront when, he's, when he said Dan, uh, we'd love to include you in some of this promotion that we're doing, but it's very important to keep the character a secret. Yeah, right. that's thank you for letting me know. And and I, I think they're planning to do a promotional tour. At least I heard they were uh, a couple of months ago, but I don't know what's, what's going. On. However, he is uh, he's um, always very um, willing to listen to your ideas, incorporate them. He hires a good team. Shimamura, Yuji Shimamura is the director usually. The, the director of Devil May Cry 3 is yeah. on 4 and 5. And I absolutely enjoy working with him. He um, has great artistic vision and also is very interested in collaborating with you, the character, and the scene. And will listen to all of your ideas all the time. That's awesome. Um, that doesn't mean they always get implemented. Right. It has to be a collaboration. And there are certain parameters that they have to, they know they have to work within. And my job is just to come in and give as much as I can or come up with you know, as many ideas. Right. Just real quick, I want to apologize. My auntie came in my room, just surprised me, like, hey, it's been a while. She clearly, <laughs> she, she clearly heard that, you know, I was talking to Dan Southworth and she wanted in on that action. <laughs> You're talking to Dan? Okay, I'm getting in there. So sorry sure, about I'll that. Pop her good. Yeah. Hearing that about uh, Itsuno, I think it, it, I think it uh, kind of clicked. I think that's why the the fans of the series has gravitated so much towards him. Not simply because he like makes these games that everybody loves. It's because he seems so personal. Yes. And like any pictures or videos you see of him, he's like having fun. Especially like the lead up to five. There's a lot of dancing and acting all goofy, and it kind of gives you the sense of connection with him. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a uh, I I enjoy. Uh, Radio, do you have any more questions? Um, no, I think it's your turn. Do you have anything from the subreddit? Take some questions uh, I from think... the chat if you want. Oh yeah. Uh, I think we can do one one more from uh, this this batch because uh, some of them are a little bit too uh, goofy. Right. Uh, <laughs> is is your portrayal of uh, Virgil inspired by a character or a person you know, or maybe even like an act like a the the writing? Virgil, Virgil, uh, there's a there's a large percentage of personal personality. Um, when we, there's not a whole lot of backstory to grab onto. Um, so you have to make up a lot of it. And, and when you do, um, you're, you can't help but be, but actually infuse parts of your personality into the character. I mean, it's part of what every actor does. There's always a portion of yourself really in the character. Um, if, if it's going to, this is going to come across believable. Um, so, um, 
that's what virtual is. Um, nowadays, I'm trying to think about Devil May Cry 3 and how much work is it. At that time, when I did Devil May Cry 3, I used to do this thing where I just write volumes and volumes and volumes of backstory. Just really? Create. Yeah. And I used to I used to take my scripts and they would be filled front to back on every single page of my own personal notes over the script. Um, and, um, you know, it was just all about accessing ideas and thoughts and getting um, some emotional, uh, getting a hold of some emotional structures, reactions to things. You know, I mean, it's just what you do to just sort of make yourself available to the character and find things that you could use or may not be useful. So, Did you, did you do that for Virgil? Yes. I mean, Do you I, remember I, any of that? I think I threw that stuff away. Oh, man. <laughs> man. People <laughs> would pay for that a stuff. Lot of, people would pay good money for that stuff. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I know, but a lot of that is very personal stuff. Uh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Stuff that you can't... Like, I used to actually write in this really small handwriting, so nobody else could read it but me. And that way, if I just left it out while it was working... <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. And I had a, a bit of a shorthand for things that I really personal uh, sort of explorations I was doing that I didn't think anybody sh should know about. <laughs> yeah. right. Fair enough, fair enough. So, I, so um, I mean, that's the way I would approach the character. But like I said, uh, a lot of Virgil, Virgil, Virgil's intensity, you know, the, the Quantum Ranger from Power Rangers Time Force had a very similar drive and goal. So I had linked up the uh, a lot of their psychological makeup. The, you know, they share a similar intensity in that. Uh, and I know that's a weird thing to say. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, looking looking back at no. clips, because I, I, I was looking, uh, I was watching clips uh, last night out of curiosity, and I was, I was thinking that, I was like, I, I get little hints of Virgil, and not just because of the voice, just because of the approach he takes right. where it's like absolute power and like this needs to be just done with like we're not dealing with nuance here yeah yes and um there's also this i mean at the time uh i, I didn't have a lot of range as an actor i just everything i did was intense mm -hmm. so i had auditioned the television show power rangers when it was first in 1995 when it, i'm sorry i think in 94 uh, when they were replacing the cast members, and Johnny Bosch and I actually screen tested uh, with each other one of those roles. I, did, I don't know if they were considering me for red or black or what. Then I thought it was black, Ranger. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, I didn't get it. Um, and then, and I, you know, they flew me out from Northern California. We screen tested. Uh, but then I moved to. Los Angeles, and um, within a month or two, I booked the Black Ranger on the live tour show. So that, so we got to tour Mexico, and Australia, um, and then that's of course how I ended up getting into the suit act, uh, getting experience with the suit acting. But then I auditioned for the show Lightspeed Rescue as the Blue Ranger, and didn't get it. And then I auditioned again for another Ranger, didn't get it. And then the feedback I got was, "Well, you're just too intense, man." If we, <laughs> we cast you as any of these other color rangers besides the red, it looks like you're going to kick the red ranger's ass. So I'm like, well, okay, so I need to learn how to vary up my range because um, all I have is one setting, absolutely intense, which <laughs> ended up working out when I got hired the character role of the quantum ranger because he's absolutely intense 100% of the time. Um, and so right after that it was in 2001 so and then about two or three years later when they cry three comes along and i'm still doing that just intense so the similarity in those characters comes from the fact that all i knew how to do was act intense and that in a way set the tone for the character i mean i'm sure that when i auditioned for shima morrison the producers of Devil May Cry 3 
that was something that they liked my own that about my own personality that they felt they liked for character Virgil mm -hmm. and there, in that sense it sort of matched up with their vision maybe perhaps perhaps I changed their idea of the character a little bit. I'm not sure yes. a few more people have a conversation but that's how the character that's how I ended up embodying this character or this character ended up with facets of my personality right. Devil May Cry 5 now I'm a much more mature actor and uh, if if they give me any room at all I'm gonna find some comedy I'm I'm much more like Dante people lies <laughs> uh, and actually if I had to do it again in audition you know I would I, you know Dante is the kind of the sort of character that I, I enjoy watching. It's the kind of characters I enjoy playing. Um, and the kind of character that I can probably accomplish now that I've got a lot more years of experience and I've learned, uh, how, to in, how to increase the range of, uh, you know, my acting ability. Um, so, you know, but I love Virgil. Virgil's a great character. Well, no, but it's, it's funny you say that, though, because I think some of the best parts at the end of DMC five, or when Virgil's finally lightened up, you know. That's right. And for me, that's a character arc that is my own arc as a as an actor, as a player. right. <clears throat> yeah, because I mean, the 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 kind of lightness in his voice is just so charming after so many games of intensity, you know. It, it's nice to see, yeah. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. And it works really well. And so, if if they continue to develop these games. Um, and they give me the room, we'll see more depth in the character. Ah, oh, don't say that! That just makes me want to <laughs> six games so badly. Yeah. We'll see a lot more depth. There's that, that whole moment that people like where he's standing on the hill talking. I mean, that was the moment for me to actually find the sensitivity in the character and actually, for the first time, be able to express it, too, as a um, and that, that, that comes from the 15 years of experience that I was able to gain in between the three. And I absolutely loved that playing that moment. There's yeah. a lot of in there. It's too bad that yours and characters got such, you can't see any, any facial expression in them, but those were really, uh, I enjoyed playing those moments as yours in. Talking about, you know, taking in the, you know, I don't like this. Uh, one one last question before we uh, move on to a few uh, questions from chat, and I think this might touch on something the chat might want to know. Um, being Virgil and how you were talking about like uh, kind of embodying him and trying to figure out his personality. Uh, from your perspective, what? How do I phrase this? What is the what is Nero's mother like? Yeah, I was going to ask imagine? the same question. Yeah, that's a question the chat's asking too. Um, <laughs> like what kind of what kind of girl if, do you imagine Virgil would end up with? Uh, you know, <laughs> end up with? I didn't. I actually didn't like that. There's almost this moment Dante tells Virgil. Uh, was his son, which his reaction is, it's my son. I have a son. And then there's a, a line in there about um, the line, I think, uh, original in its original form was something like, there was a time when I had fun. Um, and basically, uh, it, it kind of alludes to the fact that Virgil had this, like, perhaps somewhere in the 1900 years that he's right. Uh, nowadays, maybe it's 2,600 years, who knows? Uh, so, um, I just felt like that was out of character. Right. Um, and I'm kind of glad they didn't go into detail about who that is and what that situation was. So when I played it, I played it as though it's yet another thing that Virgil keeps close, close to his chest, right? He, it's another, it's another secret of his that you have to get to know a lot better to find out what that really is um and so it made sense to me in that sense in that moment then to play it as though well 
he's just doing what Dante does, you know, as his brother. It's sort of just throwing it away, but there's definitely there. Um, and I think that for anybody and for anything to be worth Virgil's time, it has to be uh, significant. Right. So obviously this is a significant person, but perhaps there's room there for Capcom or story, a sixth installment project. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. That's so awesome to hear. <laughs> um, so do uh, you want to take some questions from the chat now, chat, if you have? Yeah. I don't know how much longer we have, Dan. How much longer are you willing to uh, stay on for? I'd love to stay on longer. I'm supposed to be somewhere at one Let them stay on a little time. We don't have the time. Right, okay. So we'll take a few. And then, Dan, whenever you want to just duck out, you just you just say. I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Um, so. There's actually one I saw in the chat a few minutes ago. And, you know, we, we got so busy talking about everything else. Um, but I kept it in the back of my brain. There was a question that was, you know, since V is just half of Virgil, did you talk to that actor any? Did like did, did there was any co collaboration between you and him about how that character would be played? No, I left I left him alone. Okay. I, okay. I didn't feel I didn't feel like that would be fair. Right. To him as an act, and you know, he was excited to play the character, and I, I'm I think it's. I think it's one of Brian's first really big jobs uh, doing a motion capture. And he was he's great. No, oh, he's amazing. And as I got to know Brian, Brian has a very uh, has a very sensitive way about himself that I can relate to, and and I liked that. And he he's a he he has a way of expressing himself. It comes across intellectual, and and as I got to know him, I started to feel like there all the things that I liked about Brian were aspects of the Virgil character in the extreme in that direction. Like I was talking about Eurism being extreme version, uh, an extreme part of Virgil's personality, where he proceeds without without a care or any of the consequences. Well, then. Brian had aspects, I thought, of the other extreme portion of Virgil's personality that I, I didn't need to mess with, um, and that I shouldn't mess with, uh, as, a, as, a, as a professional, one actor to another. But, um, but it worked. And, oh, yeah. um, you know, I mean, of course, if it was just absolutely wrong, I'm sure... Um, Shimamura-san, the director, and Kitsune-san would have uh, done something about it. And that's what's nice when you're working with a group of people that all has a really good sense of what the story should be and what the characters are. It's not always like that. Sometimes you're working on productions, they just, they're not jumping and they're not, there's not a good collaboration going there. And the difficult thing about that is how far do you overstep Bounds. How you know? And those are moments when you have to ask yourself. Unfortunately, how important is this job? How yeah. important is to my craft? Yeah. And am I here just to make the money? And then you then you dive into a whole another set of philosophical questions where you're saying to yourself, "Well, these are not the jobs I want to take ever again because I don't want to have to make that compromise." And then you're going back and forth between that and yes, but. The rent's due next month, and <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. this really sucks. So yeah. um, the wonderful thing about Devil May Cry 5 was I had to dive down that rabbit hole. Right. That uh, Brian had a very good understanding and sense of the character um, on his own, and everything to it was wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, Fox? Did you, uh, did you see anything in chat? Yeah, I got one. Uh, how did you mocap for uh, Griffin and I believe... Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. I had to, I had to put on this cloak. 
<laughs> it would, it would cover up the footage. I think I saw footage similar from the live action stuff. Yeah, they would cover up the. I think it was to cover up the markers that I had on, and then I had to flap my wings. Around. Uh, my, and um, I was basically video referencing uh, them then add the character in digitally later however did I think and there were only there were specific moments where Brian would have to interact with me and um, gosh I can't remember if I was uh, my markers were exposed then or not but it allowed him to have just somebody to work Right. And uh, I did a lot of crazy stuff with the character. <laughs> I was all over the place. The, the, those were moments where, unlike, you know, what was nice about Devil May Cry 5, playing five characters. And so I, I got a chance to really stretch my range for the first time and, and not just be the stoic Virgil, yeah. but to really go into a dark place with yours and, and then to get really crazy with Griffin. And Morrison was Morrison was more along the lines of characters that I just I really like to play. They're comfortable characters to play because they're film noir type characters. And uh, when I did Morrison, you know, I, I always imagined that I was in that, you know, noir detective thriller um and i was just one of these characters that's that's a place i went to to find morrison yeah. um and so with with griffin it was it was some sort of monty python experience <laughs> where i was just gonna <laughs> let my <laughs> uh, was it the same for uh, cerberus <clears throat> oh, i'm sorry is it the was it the same for cerberus no uh, cerberus cerberus was something but definitely for Griffin, uh, I was just going to allow myself to do things. If they didn't like it, they didn't like it. I would just <laughs> different. I'd do something different until they liked it. Right. Um, and for Cerberus, that was... Um, monster characters are always fun. Monster characters are... A lot of, they take a lot of energy. As you can see on that post I put up. That yeah, was, yeah. I had to... I, unfortunately, I had to edit out the moments where I'm stopping to look and read the lines and then build up to that because that's the interesting stuff to see um but to fit it all into a minute i had to just edit it right to the intense portions of the, of the ex experiment that was an experiment mm -hmm. i was just playing off the top of my head with something and and you have to go for it a hundred percent and uh sort of shed any kind of self-consciousness i was doing that on the side they were working on something else uh during that rehearsal, and I was just on this off on the side, screaming and yelling like a rat dog. I'm sure that some of them were sort of taken aback by what was going on because nobody knew I was going to do that. I just decided to do it, and I filmed myself so I could take a look at it and sort of make a jump from there. Um, and then, of course, by the time we got a chance to film it, um, about 75% of that was kept and then there were a few other directions because there were things that they wanted to do with the character that they do so um and that that's that's that that is very similar to a lot of these sort of acting um drills that you do where they'll go where they just want you to learn to just shed your self-consciousness and dive into a character and so there'll be all kinds of things you do and this would be akin to something where they would say, okay, you're a dog right. and you're a rabid dog. And you know, this is what's going on. And then you have to just sort of improv. Right. Um, so that, that was, that was a very sort of, um, basic, uh, raw approach to just trying to find uh, how to build this monster. And most of monster monster acting is that. It's a lot of physicalizing the character, improving ideas. That works, that doesn't. I like this and, oh, this makes me feel like what's going on with this character. Um, and then after all of that, you're informed quite a bit about what this character's disposition is 
and then you can run that. I mean, obviously, he's a king, and he guards the gates to hell. <laughs> so, <laughs> some uh, uh, there there is some analytical work to do there, uh, but the scene was pretty simple. <laughs> right. So. Um, so another question that's getting asked a lot in chat, and uh, one I feel like we've kind of already answered, but I'm going to ask it again. Um, were you pleased with the ending that Virgil gets in five? Like with the whole being in hell, Fonte, fighting Dante, et cetera, was that, did, when you read it, did, were you like, yeah, that kind of clicks, or, or how did you are, feel about that? Are they in hell? Is that what they are? Yeah, they're in like they the are. under, they're in the underworld, they're cutting down tree roots, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They're still... Yeah. That's right. And because I, when I looked at it, it's it, I, for some reason, because it's all white, so I just figured they were on a mountain somewhere in a snow. <laughs> <laughs> it is very, it is not what I imagined how it was like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like it. I think it's great. He's alive. <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Same. No, he's alive. He's vibrant and he's ready to come back. <clears throat> No. Were you afraid they were going to kill him? Were you like when you got the script at no. first? Were you afraid they're going to kill him off? No, I didn't think they were. Oh, awesome. I mean, first of all, we get the scripts pretty quick, so you... yeah. There, there's. I'm always worried they're going to kill my character. I play a lot of characters that die off. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, I'm just. I'm always worried that they're going to kill the character soon. Play as long. That's. <laughs> But not not with Virgil because I mean I I just there's the the understanding that DMC five is built around this character and that he's a beloved character and that they're probably not right. Uh, Fox. Uh, just looking through the chat. Uh, if there's anything you guys desperately want to know before. Uh... Before Dan has to make his exit, uh, definitely make your voice now. Yeah. I have a little. I have a little small one. Um, <laughs> do you? So you know, he's his his coat's black now, and he has the EX color where he's blue. Which one do you prefer? Do you like the new black, or um, do you still like the old blue? I <clears throat> both. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 you know, they, they both look really cool. Here's the thing that's difficult. The blue is. But the new the new character, the detail, so amazing, so well that it just looks cool, right? So it's kind of unfair. They have to see the blue the blue version of Virgil as much detail. But I, I think that's what they did. I think they just made him a navy blue. I mean, I know it looks black. To me, there's there's highlights in it. Mm -hmm. Am I am I am I incorrect when I said there's highlights of blue? I think there are, right? There are. It's like uh, yeah, the little pattern on his uh yeah. There's a little bit of blue there. Yeah. Yeah, there's still there's still blue in the design and like the vest and um the 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 thorn pattern on the I, shoulder is still blue. Stuff like that. I like it. I think it's. I like his new costume. I oh, so many people are asking about dummy thick. Oh. <laughs> We can't. Oh, we can't do that. I can't do it. I can't. It. What is it? Oh, oh my oh. god, no! Oh my god. Why did you even Ask. mention it, Mills? <laughs> Ask. Go ahead. It's the. It, it, this will be sort of two or three questions. It is. It is this copy pasta thing that's going around. Did you see that Ruben and Dan did it? Not. Uh, not Ruben and Dan. Sorry, Dan. Ruben and Johnny. They did, did it. It's this dumb, like copy pasta where you say it in the character's voice <clears throat> okay hey somebody else talk to him while i put it in the chat okay oh, <laughs> i can't <laughs> that's like you can't you can't say it come on it's like a put it on there split. i'll look at it if it's ridiculous i'll just pass <laughs> okay <laughs> that's I'll entirely it... fine we were never gonna uh, we never were intending to ask it but like the chat is rioting yeah uh, we'll, we'll, we'll it, do so. we'll do one absolutely zany ridiculous we'll satisfy one zany okay that's that's entirely respectable how uh how's it go okay. oh wait no i remember oh uh, well uh radio's looking it up uh there i think i can't remember if we asked this i think we might have but um is there any uh standout line uh of virgil's that you really like that you're like that's 
the line I really enjoy doing or feel fits the character? Um, not really. <laughs> you know, I, I I gotta say, not really. I mean, this time around, I gotta say some really things I gotta say. I, I really enjoy. It. Um, but yeah, yeah, not really. Delicious Dante is. That's that's the one that comes to mind. Okay, okay. cool. I'm typing this. I just want to apologize in advance. <laughs> yep. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Dan, if this uh, is what you talk out, I would not be surprised. You know this. You know it. <laughs> what's T H I C C? Thick. <laughs> Thick. Like. Yeah, like, <laughs> like a, like, it's like a fat ass. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. <laughs> you don't have to. So Johnny did this? Yeah, he did. Johnny yeah. and Ruben both did it. They both said these ridiculous, this ridiculous <laughs> Yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> no! Oh I'm going to say it as though they're in the heat of battle, okay? Oh my god, okay. Okay, here we go. Ready? Mm -hmm. Dante, I'm trying to fight these demons, but my dummy thick in the clap of my ass. Cheeks keeps alerting me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Now that I got you. Yeah. This is kind of how voiceover works. You and you go, oh, oh my God. Dante, I'm trying to fight these demons, but I'm dummy thick and the clap of my ass keeps alerting them. <laughs> okay, here we go. Dante. Listen, man. I'm trying to fight these demons. I'm dummy thick and the clap of my ass cheeks keeps alerting them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying. I understand you and Nero have the same problem. Do about... <laughs> well, there you go. Oh it's my all, god! It's all downhill from here. Uh, uh, there you go, guys. I'm gonna have to go. I'm actually. Uh, I was supposed to be somewhere 44 minutes ago. Oh, oh, oh thank god. you so much for um, taking the time. Do, let's do two more. Let's do two more quick questions. I said three or two more quick questions. Go though. Go 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 chat. Uh, they're all okay, you got your wish. Mind. Come on. They're all losing their minds about the dummy thick thing. Uh... Here, here, let me get. Let me do another version. Okay. Dante. Hey man, I'm I'm trying to fight the demons, but I'm dummy thick, and the clap of my ass cheeks keeps. Oh. <laughs> What's ever happened to you? There you go, chat. I actually didn't say anything. <laughs> When he was saying it, so there you go. You have it nice and you have a nice quiet audio track for you guys to isolate. Oh, man. Uh, one uh, one quick one, uh, Dan, that I I remember from the the subreddit. Uh, who would you rather have a beer with, uh, the Quantum Ranger or Virgil? Um, <laughs> who would I like to have a beer? With? Probably the Quantum Ranger. Okay. A uh, chance of losing a uh, losing an arm. <laughs> uh, Virgil, Virgil's not the kind of guy that you sit down and have a plot yeah. with. Them. <laughs> uh, and okay, also, then... uh, one one final one that I think might be uh, good to end off on. Uh, did you always uh, plan to be a voice actor, or did that something you just kind of fell into? Um, it's nice that you guys are calling. Me i've voiced a couple of other very small characters here and there virtual is really the only voice acting i i do right. um and i'm i'm lucky enough to have uh had the chance to play a character that uh fans of the game have turned around and then enjoyed my actual voice i don't get it's interesting, um, and it's been great for me to see that so many people like my own personal voice. For so many years, I had to try to modulate, change it to play different characters on television, and even when I've auditioned um, voice characters. And now, because of uh, the uh, how well received my voice is for this character, I in later years have stopped doing and I go into auditions and I approach characters 
as myself, as oh, my awesome. don't I don't try to change it, and um, <clears throat> it's working fine. So I have the Devil May Cry fan dumb to thank for giving me the confidence to be comfortable with my own voice. Oh, that's awesome. awesome. And perhaps that's that so cool. will... There is a new there is a new game that uh, I just worked on. Uh, I can't say anything about it. It's a it's a big campaign that they're planning to produce, and uh, I came in and I played one of the characters, and they they absolutely enjoy. I'm told my performance, my approach, and my ability to the characters. So that may be yet another game where I get to play. They said it's it's possible I I could play as well but you never know i mean there's still this idea of what a hero's voice is supposed to sound like or male character voices are supposed to sound like and i have a distinct voice um that that's a little askew from what the is so we'll see what happens but the word to use any any person to contact in terms of uh booking other conventions if people want to 
Yeah, it's um, um, her name is Tabitha Minchu, and uh, I she's with Green Room. Post uh, a few weeks, a month or two back, uh, notifying everybody that that's the person to get in contact. I'll post again. I'll do. In fact, I'll post right now. Just find that picture, post it up, so that um, anybody who wants to schedule. Anybody who wants to can get in contact and schedule future conventions. Just yeah. fine. And and for anyone in the in the chat that doesn't know, tell the con you want Dan. Don't contact. Right. Yeah. Don't message Dan. Message the con <laughs> that you want to go. Yeah. To. Talk to talk to whichever con. Yeah. And you got yeah. the con, and you can put them in. You can put them in touch with. Can I say real quick, by the way, big shout out to uh, your friend Susan, Dan. For helping set this up, absolutely, mm-hmm. and and or you can contact Susan, uh, Tz. Those of you, who she is. But uh, other than that, we have to we absolutely have to thank her, for yeah. Me and you guys, and uh, making this, facilitating this, and making. And I mean, thank you for coming to hang out with us. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome. I I actually enjoyed. <laughs> 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 Listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send this over right now. I'm gonna put it up. <clears throat> what is this on Twitter? Where... No, I'm gonna I'm gonna post it here for you guys. Ah, right, okay, right. Awesome. <clears throat> and then I'll repost it. Awesome. There you go. Okay. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. A- Thank you for joining for- us. Yeah. Um, that was a blast. Yeah. And yeah gosh. Genuine, genuine honor, Dan. Thank you yeah. so much. My, ple- my pleasure. It is all downhill from here. It does not get any better than this. <laughs> we've all, this is, we've yeah. all peaked. Yeah. We've all peaked. <laughs> okay. You guys, thanks. enjoy the rest of your weekend. And perhaps we'll get a chance to do Heck yeah. Thank you, Dan. Awesome. Thanks. Good to be here. Take care, buddy. Thanks, everyone uh, who uh, joined in, by the way, to tune in. Susan, it's easy. Thank you very much oh, for yeah. setting this up. Yeah. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, she, she always lets me know it's a good group of people, and uh, she was absolutely right about it. Oh, thanks, Dan. Thanks, Susan. You're both the best. Right, okay. Okay. Thanks, so, everyone. Um, so we're going to go off there. I think we're looking out. Bye. 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 Bye, Bye, everyone. (laughs) Bye.